If like me, you've done a lot of manual work in Excel that takes a lot of time, causes a lot of stress, you might be thinking there must be a better way. Well, you're in the right place. We can use Excel VBA to speed up those repetitive tasks, get them done at the click of a button. In this series, we're gonna work through an example from Eric. We're gonna look at it in a second. It's a real life example. We're gonna get it done step by step. You're gonna see how to use Excel VBA to save time in your work. With that said, let's get into Eric's example. He sent us an email. Now you can stop the video and really go through his requirements in detail, but I'll clearly summarize. We've got a data file and Eric wants to know of all the names in the file, how many times does each name appear? We've got a situation where some of the values are duplicated, some of them are duplicated on other sheets. So it's kind of a complicated situation. It would take a lot of manual, frustrating manual work in order to get this task done. But with VBA, we can get it done at the click of a button. Let's get into the file quickly. Make sure you download the file, work along with me. Let's do some familiarization. We've got six sheets in the file. First, the analysis sheet. This is where we're gonna do the analysis. Then we've got this indirect sheet. We're gonna to come to that later in the series. That's gonna help us. And then we've got, most importantly, our four data sheets. So you can see we've got lists of names, uh, four different states here. Some of these names appear once, some appear twice, some appear three times. Could be an absolute nightmare if you had to do it manually. And Eric has told us in his briefing, his data set is huge, up to 35,000 or 90,000 rows, he said. So our approach has to be scalable. It has to work for bigger data sets. So with that said, let's think about how to get started. This is a critical point in your VBA project. We can't just jump into the code. We can't just jump into making formulae. We've got to stand back and think step by step, what do we need to do? And then take a piece of work and just do it step by step. Now, what do we need to do? Well, one thing we're definitely going to have to do is loop through these sheets because we need to get the data, look at the data from each sheet. So first, Let's create a mechanism just to loop through the sheet. So we've taken this huge task that's very difficult to understand and just taken our first step. That's something that we can manage looping through sheets. So I'm going to go to the Visual Basic Editor here, Insert, Brand New Module, and then Option Explicit. Always good practice to put Option Explicit at the top. And then we want a meaningful routine name. What's the routine doing? Well, it's getting unique entries. So I'm gonna say get unique names. Okay, so we've got our subroutine there and we've given it a name. So what are we gonna do first? We want to loop through these sheets. Now I'm gonna do this using a for next loop. We could use a for each loop to do this. To do this, use the sheets collection, loop through each sheet in the workbook. But using for next, it has a particular advantage that we're gonna see in a second. So if we're gonna have a for next loop, then we need an integer variable. You can call your variable anything you like, but I like meaningful variable names. This variable is counting, so I've called it a counter. And of course, let's complete the syntax properly, proper, properly, and let's speak properly too. Dim counter as integer. Okay, there we go. So very simply, let's put in a line of code just to select a sheet and then we're going to build it up from there. So I'm going to say sheets, TX customers, TX, TX customers, which is one of the sheet names, dot select. So a simple line of code just to select a sheet there. I'm going to hit the F8 key to step through the code. That's the F8 key on the Windows PC. You could go to debug and step into at the top. That's going to allow us to step through the code and see, what's, see, what's, see what is happening. Can't speak today. So stepping through the code, we can see we've selected the TX customer sheet. So that's simple enough. That's what we expected to happen. What if we did this? You may have seen this elsewhere on the channel. We're just gonna put a number in there. Now we're using the sheet's index number to select the sheet. So we should get the same result. I'm gonna go back to the analysis sheet, back to the VBA editor, F8 key, stepping through the code, what happens? Again, we've selected the TX customers sheet. So that's interesting. We're using just a number, the sheet index, just a number to select a particular sheet. 
How does that fit with this for next loop that we're using? Maybe you're seeing some of the connections here. Right, let's make the magic happen. Let's put the loop in. And we're gonna say for counter equals, and this is where we determine the scope of the loop. Where does the loop start and where does the loop finish? We're gonna say for counter equals one to six, just to begin with here. And then let's say, let's close the loop first. Always good practice to close the loop when you open the loop because you might forget to do it later and that might cause problems. It's caused me plenty of problems over the years. So what are we expecting to happen now? Well, it's just gonna select the third sheet in the file, the TX customer sheet. So that's not particularly exciting, but you can see this is how we build things up, step by step, steady and systematic. It does get more exciting if I put the variable name in here. Viewers of the channel might have seen this coming. It's a technique we've seen before. I've just put the variable name here instead of the sheet index number, but the variable is carrying, if you like, is carrying a number a number between one and six. So what's gonna happen now? Let's step through the code. So the value of counter, I'm just gonna hover over the counter variable there. The value of counter is now one. So we're gonna select the first sheet in the file. We're seeing a loop working with a variable here. Value of counter is now two, we've selected the second sheet. Is three, we've selected the third sheet. And then we're gonna carry on until we get to the end, the sixth sheet in the file. So there we've set up our simple mechanism just to select sheets, but we can do a little bit better than that. What problems might there be here? Well, you might say, well, Chris, what if we were to add more sheets to the file? This is a common thing that people do. And Eric has told us he wants his code to be scalable. So what if we put some more sheets in the file? Well, we can replace this six and say, let's say active workbook, active workbook dot sheets and then dot count dot count at the end so this line of code is going to say the number of sheets in the workbook the total number of sheets in the workbook now this is better because if more sheets are added the code is going to be able to respond to that so that means the code is flexible and scalable then you might also be thinking but chris what about the first two sheets in the file? We've got an analysis sheet, the first sheet in the file. Then we've got this indirect sheet that we're gonna to come to later. We want to exclude those, exclude those from the analysis. And now you might see how powerful it is using this numerical referencing technique. We can very easily exclude the first two sheets by just saying for counter equals three. So it's not gonna look at the first sheet. It's not gonna look at the second sheet. It's gonna st going start at the third sheet three, four, five, six, and then it's going to stop there. So let's just go through the code again, F8 key. What are we expecting to happen? Counter equals three, just hovering the cursor over the variable gives us, displays the value of the variable. Okay, third sheet selected, fourth sheet selected, and the fifth sheet selected, and finally the sixth sheet selected. So that's as far as we're gonna go in this video. You can see how we build things up step by step do a little bit, test it. We've got started with our everyday VBA coding task. I'll see you in the next video.